Natural Museum, Museum Center. So this is a small little Ordovician period display. It is maybe oh five feet, three feet, five feet tall, three feet across. And of course, it begins at waist level, but this is a very humble, small Ordovician display, which is kind of a shame because this is the best place in the world for finding these, and we haven't really done justice on making a big uh, Cincinnati fossil display yet. They're, and in the future, they're going to raise funds to build an Ordovician hall, but at the moment, this is going to make do. Ordovician period, 430 million years ago. This scene shows the ancient squid-like creatures, trilobites, and other sea creatures thriving in the warm, shallow sea. This environment changed very little over a period of 7 million years. Then about 430 million years ago, something happened to upset the balance and cause a mass extinction. This paleo globe, this is a result of the ice caps being melted, and the Cincinnati Tri-State area was under anywhere from uh, 5 feet to uh, 60 feet of seawater, inland seawater. We were underneath the equator. Cincinnati is the best place in the world for finding Ordovician age fossils. Endoceros cephalopod, nautiloid cephalopod. Your conularia. This is a model of an isotelus trilobite with its antennas. This is the side view of the isotelus trilobite, little antennas and little legs. And the flexicalami miki is walking here. Here's the nautiloid cephalopod here, with the tentacles closed, is in a swimming position, darting off. And this is the coral in light purple. This is nice to see the brachiopods, the seashells, in a colored version because they obviously did have uh, patterns on the shells as modern day seashells do. We, who knows what they really look like. The orange twig-like structures is representing some bryozoans and they're rather twig-like and a little bit fan-shaped as well. Some of them look a little bit like this, but usually they look a little bit more thinner, twig-like, so it's slightly inaccurate. In blue, you see the, uh, the light blue, we see what looks like flowers. These are the crinoids. These are the stalks and the open arms. The arms are facing the current, and they're catching the uh, filter feeding the plankton. On the stalk itself, there are some very tiny zygospira, the little tiny brachiopods. And I guess on occasion they have been found like that. And on occasion we'll find snails trying to attack and eat the crinoids as well. We see some uh, snail down here at the bottom, uh, screwing along the seafloor. This shows the clamshells partially submerged in the sediment. And over here they show a lingula with the pedicle uh, burrowing deep down, creating that characteristic burrow. Uh, these little clamshells pulling themselves into the sediment. The big raffinosquina brachiopods are right there. And next to a platystrophia, another trilobite scurrying around. Platystrophia embedded into the ground. There's another snail. And here's our horn coral. They're shown on the sides here, resting on the sides. They're tentacled arms trying to capture prey. Whatever might scurry nearby. Okay. This area is representing the soft, soft oozy mud, and this back here. The animals are attached and resting on this. That is representing a hard ground, whereas the hard is literally harder, and the animals like to attach to that because the soft, oozy mud is uh, too squishy for them to get a good footing on, so to speak. So the, uh, as you can see in this painting back here, you have crinoids that attach themselves to the hard grounds, and. 
true for some of the other species as well. This shows you the, uh, the hard grounds in the background. They're showing this diorama going off into the distance. So all these hard grounds are anchor points for a lot of the crinoids. There's a trilobite coming out of a little rusophycus it dug for itself. These trilobites would dig down to uh, avoid detection from the predators of the cephalopods. So that's sort of like a World War II soldier in a foxhole, so to speak. It's a little bit safer if you get down below the surface where you're not quite as easily seen. In the diorama, they're showing some crinoids that are on the seabed. And crinoids, they will deteriorate and fall to pieces. 